I attended the wedding of one of my former roommates the other week, and it was the first Jewish wedding that I've attended in my life. That day, I learned so much about another faith tradition while we danced, sang, prayed, and danced a bunch more to celebrate the love of two amazing humans. In this vlog, let me take you along the journey of that day with explanations of the different parts of a traditional Orthodox Jewish wedding. Let's do the thing. Prepping for Mike and Sarah's wedding, first Jewish wedding that I'm actually going to be attending, so don't really know exactly what to expect, Really excited, super, super blessed to be able to have these friends that celebrate their culture and that I'm able to get a glimpse of because otherwise I would have never, ever seen something like this. So we'll see, let's have a good time. So it's gonna be a pretty long night, I'm thinking. The schedule says it goes till midnight, but I have a feeling that we're gonna be, be there a little bit later. So picked up, uh, picked up a big latte here. Is it too much caffeine for the day? Probably. Am I gonna drink it anyway? Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna be soaking in this whole thing. So also, as a quick note, I uh, on the way here, I wasn't driving, but I was researching what exactly to expect from a Jewish wedding. And that is something where this is the first Jewish wedding that I'm ever going to. And there's so many different customs, a lot of it was in Hebrew. And what I was realizing is there's gonna just be a lot, especially since I just started researching today, that I won't understand, that I won't get. But what will I do? Just lean in. I think that I may be the only Filipino Catholic guy there. It's very much going to be um, mostly their family and their friends, many of whom are Jewish. And so people are going to be having a fun time. They're gonna know their traditions, they're gonna know the songs, all that. And for me, it's just leaning in, leaning into the whole experience, having a blast with it, um, and being willing to make a fool of myself in the sense of just really embracing the culture for all it's worth. So let's see, let's get it. We got to the synagogue early in preparation for the wedding to begin. Even though I'm not Jewish, I wore a kippah throughout the night since we were in a holy place. There was beautiful music being played as we awaited the first ritual, the Kabbalah Panim. The bride, Sara, came in singing and dancing with her bridesmaids to a special seat where the female guests went up to welcome and greet her. As the bride, Sara gave her guests blessings as they approached. This was the first place where I got an idea of the amount of excitement, joy, and singing that were in store for the evening. A bit later, the groom, Mike, came in along with his groomsmen and friends for the Bedeckin. Traditionally, this is the first time that the groom sees the bride in a week, as they are separated for the seven days preceding their wedding. During the Bedeckin, the groom puts the veil on the bride, a tradition that originates from the Bible in Genesis 29 where Jacob marries Leah instead of her sister Rachel, the woman he loved, because the women's father switches them without Jacob knowing. Sarah doesn't have a sister, but Mike put the veil on her just to be safe. Once this was finished, we munched on some hors d'oeuvres, all the food that night was kosher of course, before heading into the main sanctuary for the chapa, the name of both the ceremony as well as the marriage canopy they stood under. The chapa symbolizes the home that the married couple will build together, but it does not have any walls. This is because it represents the idea that family and friends will always be welcome in their home. I didn't actually record any of the ceremony itself because Mike and Sarah wanted us all to simply be present and enjoy the experience with them. Trust me when I say it was truly, truly beautiful experience. The wedding party danced their way out of the sanctuary and the dancing kept on going for much of the evening from there. A little bit later, Mike and Sarah entered the room and the Simcha dancing commenced from there. Simcha means joy or happiness, and that is exactly the vibe that was experienced by everyone. There was a live band that played most of the evening, and though I assume it was rather expensive, it made such a difference to the overall environment. I couldn't tell you the amount of times that I heard the song Od Yashama, but there are plenty of worse songs to get stuck in your head. In the middle of the Simcha dancing was the shtick. The idea behind this is to bring as much joy and laughter to the couple on their wedding day. Friends and family brought up props, did skits, danced, and did whatever they needed to do to bring happiness to the couple. We had a food break after more than an hour of Simcha dancing where I ate some delicious sushi, a salad, cuts of meat, and more while we listened to the speeches and watched first dances. In addition, there was a post-meal prayer, which was all done in Hebrew, but luckily they provided books for their non-Hebrew speaking guests to follow along with. Interestingly, the books read from right to left, because though there were English translations, the main writing was in Hebrew. In Yiddish, the term for this postmill prayer is benching, and in Hebrew, it is the Birchat Hamason. 
I definitely screwed up that pronunciation there. In the Jewish tradition, I was told that the prayer happens after the meal as opposed to before it. In addition, they added in the Shiva Brachot, or the seven blessings, after the benching because it was a wedding. Following the prayers, we had hours and hours more of dancing. I have limited footage from this period because, well, I was focused on enjoying the experience fully in the present with so many dear friends. At the end of the day, there are times where it's more important to just be, soak in whatever the present moment has to offer and be with our loved ones. I'll let past Matt wrap up the evening now. All right, we're about to leave, but here we found some churros. Wow, these churros are so good, I'm gonna take five. Guys, I got the churro load. Bring the churros on the road. It was a great wrap. What are our thoughts? Hey, what are our thoughts, Dina? What are our thoughts on this on this wedding today? It was okay, a good it was one. It a fabulous wedding. Dina the street. Yep. Snacking. Of our great friends. Yep, great friends. Now we're enjoying a little midnight snack. A little midnight snack. Hey, a little past midnight snack. All right, we're gonna hopefully drive safely. If you don't see this video, that means we didn't make it. Love ya. See ya.